In this video, I'm just going to show how to um, arch text in a couple different ways. So if I were to have some text here in loving memory. OK, so I've got my text written out. If I wanted that to arch, one thing that I can do is create an arch. Um, there's all sorts of drawing tools you can use for creating one. You can use the ellipse. You can use the three-point curve, however you want to do it. Three-point curve is easy. Um, you just click and hold control. It stays in line. And then you let go of your mouse button and holding control again to stay um, even on both sides. If you don't, then it ends up looking like this. So holding control, though, it stays a nice arch there. So then I click again to end my three-point curve. The other option is you can use a circle like this. And if you want to t uh, turn a s an oval or an ellipse into just a line, you can see this arc option here. Um, you can move your nodes, your beginning and ending nodes. You can also do that just with a plain ellipse tool um, by selecting your node. If you drag your node with your cursor to the outside, it becomes an arc. If you drag your node with your cursor to the inside, then it becomes a pie. So as long as you drag to the outside, it, it turns it into an arc. But I think that's a little bit more time consuming than using three point curve. So anyway, just to show you how that works. OK, so now that we've got this text, if we wanted to fit it to this curve so that it arches, you can <coughs> uh, right click and drag until it gets to there. It changes the cursor a little bit to uh, like a uh, crosshair. And then you let go and say fit text to path. And that will then curve your text uh, to that path. Once it's on the path, if you click on it, you can drag it around, move it up. You can see it'll give you dimensions here for how far away it is from that line. Um, also, if you drag to the right, you'll see a red line. That means that it's going to be centered now. So if I drag it to the left all the way, um, it'll give a left red line there to show that I'm all the way over to that right edge. If I do the same thing, or left edge, if I do the same thing here to the right, then it'll give me that line. Typically, though, you're going to be centered. So I just drag it here to center. The line itself, you can right, you can click on it and then right click over here on um, no fill or no outline. Right clicking gives it no outline. That way you don't even see that, but it's still movable and editable along that curve. So that's one option. Um, if you wanted the text to actually be a, a bit more up and down, you come over here and change the orientation to something like this. So that way it actually stays straight up and down, but still curves along that edge. So you can play with these different options here. This one just kind of staggers it along that line. So there's different options you can play with there as far as how you want it to look. The other thing too is a lot of times um, if you're working on circles or things, uh, sometimes your text is upside down. So these buttons here are good to know the mirror text horizontally and vertically, because sometimes if it's on the inside of the line, you actually want to mirror it so that it looks correct. But that's how you would do it with uh, fit text to path. An alternative to using a uh, fit text to path would be to use an envelope. So I can take my text and go up to effects and say envelope. And it brings up my envelope docker over here. If I use my shape tool to select it, it also gives me the same options here along the property bar. But if I just add new and then come down here to say single arc, or you, I mean, you could do a double arc as well, but if I click on this middle node here and drag up, you'll see what it does. I'm gonna undo that real quick. Now if I click and drag holding control, Sorry, I'm going to click and drag while holding control. I have to, sorry, I have to add new again. Come back to click on single arc. If 
I'm going to click and drag holding control, and control will bring up the bottom and the top together at the same time. And then I can let go, and it'll arch it that way. I'm going to undo that again. Um, add a new. This time, with my single arc, I'm going to hold shift. And if I hold shift, then it does it opposite, so they grow in opposite directions. But holding control, I'm able to just arch it like that. If I did the... Uh, the double line instead, so I'm going to click Add New and do Double Arc, and it becomes more like a SERP top or a banner kind of look. And holding Control will then make sure that both of those edges go the same uh, same way. If I didn't hold Control, then it would just do one side at a time. Add New. So if I don't hold control, then that's what happens. So those are two different ways um, kind of to get the same overall arch. I just grab this and hold control. But the difference being that this is not a rotating each letter. It's um, just applying that effect to those letters. So it gives it more of the look here where we were doing a the straight up and down. So two different ways to achieve the same result, really. Envelopes are fun because you can apply all sorts of different crazy things. You can also do presets. So if I wanted to, I could come in here and grab a preset like this and just hit apply and it would apply that to it. And you can mess with things like this. Anyway, there's lots of different things you can do with envelopes. So that's how I would uh, arch text. So if we were doing this on a die, for instance, if I had created the die, one of the things you can do is you can actually click on the text tool. And as I hover over, it says edge there and changes my cursor uh, to a, a line looking thing. So if I click on that, it will now actually follow that path. So fit to this path. So it's fitting to that path. And then I can drag and pull it down interactively. The problem with doing it this way is that even though it's really long, as you type, if it's too long, then you're going to start curving all the way around your edges of your stone. Um, which, on a stone like this, doesn't really matter a whole lot, but if you were trying to do that on, let's say, rings or something that have a much smaller area, then it can usually get pretty troublesome. So, when there's rings, I usually don't actually fit to the path of the ring. I'll create a new line to do that. There's just some tips on uh, curving text or arcing text. <laughs>